Welcome to Caro, a show about Latin X who want it all. I am an actor. My name is Lorena Rusi. Cunnilingus is hard to spell. I don't know, what else should I say to camera? Welcome back to Quiero, I'm Priscilla. Thank you so much for tuning in and make sure you subscribe to our channel. This is our final installment of season one. Mental Health Awareness Month is over, but it is now June, it's Pride, we're in LA. We wanted to make this episode about the intersection between mental health and sexuality and gender. So we today are speaking to Lorena Rusi. Lorena is a New York City-based stand-up comedian, and you know, we really got into mental health and sexuality, mental health and its role in Latinidad. I also had the chance to talk to Lorena's parents who are originally from Colombia. We talked so much about mental health across generations, so I actually wanted to handle it. Uh, so I got into comedy when I was 19 because there was a free improv class at the Magnet and I was playing soccer in school and I had just come out and I had just transferred schools and I was like, well, I've done so many changes, what's one more gonna do? And I took this class and it was like all these 25 to 30 year olds that are like, you know, they're like, never, they're like, oh, maybe I'll do something fun. And I was 19 and I was like, I really need this. And I did it and it was like, I had never felt more alive or like whatever Eat, Pray, Love is about. Like that was my Eat, Pray, Love moment. And so I went to this audition and I auditioned to be the Chipotle Snapchat host. And then I booked it and I got it and I was like, whoa. And then I started uh, working at The Late Show. And so I was like, maybe I'll just do comedy. And that's how it kind of all spiraled over years. And now I'm doing it full time. Do you think about your uh, mental health? Like, do I think? I actually took April off because I was working myself to the ground. Uh, and I got to a point where I was crying to my girlfriend and I was like, I only see my friends if I cast them in things, which is beautiful and great because you like my success is your success and like we're all gonna bring each other up in this struggle. But also like I really would like to be able to call my friends and just be like, what are you doing? Great, do you wanna just talk for 20 minutes? And I got to a point where I wasn't doing that. And my therapist was like, you're all go, go, go. So you're still going to therapy. So I just finished things with the therapist. Sorry, babe. Um, <laughs> She's the best. She was the best. Uh, I won't say her name, but you know who you are. She actually maybe will watch this. Maybe. She's Latin. I've said too she much. Is. I was 20 and I just transferred schools and it was with this very lovely white woman. Won't say her name either. She's probably watching too. Um, but she was like, great. She was like the podcast that I needed. So I was with her for three years in school and this person I was with for two years. Um, and I really wanted someone Latin. And this person is a Bolivian woman and she was undocumented at like, and was like living in New York from New York. Um, and so I really wanted to discuss race with her. But now I really want to talk about queerness and gender and sex. And I felt like she wasn't able she to wasn't do that. Perfect. Like I need someone to be like, you, I understand you're bullshitting me right now. Like, t like what's really going on? Like I need a, a coach. Like I need a softball coach to be like, more push-ups. And I'm like, yes, push-ups. And that's how I understand. Like um, my favorite directors are the ones that are like, I didn't like that. I don't believe you. What's going on that you feel like you need to move more into that? Uh, oh my God. Well, okay, so I started doing comedy full time and had this whole like, well, what am I doing? And casting directors are like, what is your brand? What are you about? And so I auditioned for this gender non-conforming show and they're like, okay, so do you identify as like trans? And I'm like, I don't know, I just have resting colonial man face. And I was like, yeah, I just like look like Thomas Jefferson reincarnated. And it also, I didn't realize, but like I finally was able to put my hair up in a ponytail and I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh my God, all these years, I thought it was because I was so butchy and like had short hair and that's why I was getting called sir. But I really have a face that is like confusing to people. And I get, I never understood it. And people are like, no, but you're such a woman. I'm like, no, no, but like, it's so fine that I'm not. And I'm kind of okay with that. So it spiraled into this whole thing where most people are like, I've always known. And I'm like, I had no idea. I had to just look in a mirror and like put my hair up in a ponytail and go, wow, that's a man. And like, that was my Broadway moment. And so it had, and that happened in like November or something. And so, I have just been like processing that information and realizing, you know, maybe I don't fully identify as a lesbian. I've always been like the lesbian, 
but maybe that's not for me anymore and how do I figure out those titles, those pronouns? And in my circles, people are super respectful. So like, what are your pronouns? I'm like, I don't, mm, what, she, whatever, they. Uh, but I keep referring to myself as a lady man. So they get confused, but it's because they're so sensitive about it. But anywhere else, people are like, oh, I love that you're this woman and it's just easy. So right now I'm in this like, it's easy and it's fine and I've been conditioned as a woman for so many years so I still identify fully more as a woman than man but uh, it's I need to go talk about it with someone you want to like you yeah want to figure it out I mean as a kid I went to therapy because I thought I was a boy and like this girl was like you are a boy and I was like no I'm not she's like yeah you are you hang out with the boys you dress in boys clothing and you kind of seem like a boy to me I was like that's that's just math you're right that's just math and she's like it's just math and like so I went off and told my mom and she was like go to therapy and the therapist was like you know she's a baby she doesn't know so now it's like I've always used comedy to forget about everything and just I my therapy is my stand-up like I'll just start talking like I started talking about this in my stand-up and that's when I was like no I have to go to a therapist because some stuff should just be like for a stranger. The thought of like landing somewhere new excite you or scare you? Oh, it's terrifying. It's terrifying to be somewhere totally different. Um, I already came out of the closet once. Like, you know, I, to put on, like I describe it like you put your coming out jacket back in the closet and you're like, bye, that was so much fun. Like second puberty, like never going to do it again. And now it's like second puberty again. And I don't want to do that. The jacket doesn't fit. It also kind of smells. I haven't been in that closet for years. And now you're like going back and you're like, oh my God, all those thoughts, all those times. And, or like any experience I've had with the trans community or my friends that are more androgynous has just been really different. Like I don't know a lot of comedians uh, that are androgynous. It's very weird to not just be like a husky, hunky homo. And like I'm very weird in the circle. Cause they're like just- and also that, and also that. So it's like Aladdin, Leonardo DiCaprio, that also is funny. It's like too much. It's too much, it's too much. Why aren't you writing this down? Um, I'm recording it twice. Okay, so, great, great. Oh, you know, that seems dumb. Um, but yeah, so I've always been very aware of mental health and like my sister's been going to therapy since she was 12, you know? So it's always been present in my life and I guess my parents have been really woke about it because they, unlike most, uh, I think, my La unlike most of my Latinx friends whose family members are like, shut it off, shut it down, keep it moving. They were like, okay, I don't fully want to hear about it, but like but go to a therapist. To happen. <laughs> you like introduce your parents? Eventually we're gonna yes, 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 yes. Okay. My parents are Oswaldo Rusi and Nora Rusi. They're very cool. My parents are very cool, super progressive. They got married when I was seven. They're super uh, health freaks. They do therapy. They have very interesting and similar haircuts. <laughs> do not go to their barber. Do not. Do not go. It's not good. Um, my dad's a teacher and my mom's a personal trainer. Okay, do you want me to make coffee? Shall I do this? Please. Okay, great. Can you please indulge us? Yes, who would actually like coffee? I want coffee. One, two, three. No one cares. Okay. <laughs> so there's this big conversation that's happening lately about the mental health of black and brown communities. And the fact that like as communities, we don't actually know how to have this conversation. I think culturally, we have a lot of trouble accepting our trauma, right? It's not just that we don't have necessarily the tools to deal with trauma, is that also saying that we might have trauma is really hard. He had a stroke and it caused a lot of grief in the family because he wouldn't go see a therapist. And so now I thought he was still seeing the therapist. So I'm actually surprised mm. he's not. But we talk a lot about how he won't accept the trauma from that. And he stayed because he's also a martyr. He loves, he couldn't understand the therapist, right? You couldn't understand her and she didn't really speak Spanish. No, no, not because of that, because you know, uh, actually the point not was the language, the point was that I didn't like her. Right, but so then why didn't you go see someone I else? I went to another one and similar situation. You know, it's like when you're in love with someone, you need the like, uh, you know, the connection. Right, so but, but, connection. You know, at some point, at some point, I got the feeling that, you know, I didn't want to go. Right. I mean, I don't want to literally back you into a corner as you are against this fridge right now, but, 
But like for me and Erica, right, it was really important that you went to go see a therapist and we're constantly my like, sorry, in my case, go ahead. because of the language. It was, mm. I, I find somebody who I, I feel more comfortable speaking my own language. And I found somebody again, Puerto Rican, and I asked her to speak <laughs> Spanish. And she said, yes, I am a psychologist in Spanish. Fool me once. So I yeah. start asking <laughs> questions in Spanish a lot. And I feel like she didn't understand my language, my right. point. Even culture, even if we, we have a lot of similitudes, it's, it's very different. Mm -hmm. It's different because... Well, therapists are hard. Therapists are... I think for me, like in a therapist, I want someone that challenges me and I have problems with therapists because I just make them laugh. So I basically mm. just do comedy for 45 minutes and then maybe I'm like, sex is weird and that's how I do. I understand how hard it is to find someone because I like, it's, it's like dating. It is like dating. And I think it's, but I think also because you guys are older. It's easy to find somebody. To marry? I'll go with er to Erica with her therapist, and the therapist is very like strict, and will interrupt Erica and be like, "No, this is what it is." And Erica will be like, "Yeah, you're right," because Erica just like won't say what she wants, and the therapist is like, "This is it," and I'm like, "She is interrupting you like crazy," and she's like, "That's kind of just what I need. Like, I need that kind of because that's what my mom was like. My mom was very strict and was just like, "This is what it is." Mm. But you guys also put me in therapy when I was six. Because I would say that because someone in my class told me I was a boy and I was like, I didn't I didn't have the language to be like, oh, I'm just androgynous or sporty. And then now like it's weird because now I'm like, yeah, kind of. But when I was six, I didn't get that. And I was walking in the street. We were walking on um, Cromwell and we were with Erica and I was like, mom, I'm a boy. And my mom was like, what? Yeah, and so I went to a therapist. I went to like six sessions of this guy. For, for clothes for boys in general. Yeah, I always I was, but then. Sure what's going on with but her. I told you that I said I was a boy, yeah, and you were I like, round the police. No, they no, thought I was like a very happy kid, so I'd show up, and they'd be like, just draw your feelings. I'd be like, great, and I drew. I still remember this. I drew a smiley face on a tree, and the therapist was like, you don't need to see me anymore, <laughs> like, because it was like I was just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still remember that. I was a really happy kid. Yeah, I remember. And I was, I, was just, I was such like a serious child. I know, but so was my sister. Oh and my so my God. parents didn't know what to do because I think like truly you guys took us to therapy because you were like, this makes sense. Yeah, but you know, the, the reality is that actually she was really worried. Um, I have been more flexible. You knew a lot of lesbians in your life. <laughs> but the story is that when you you can tell them. Out of the, from the closet, remember that day? That you oh, when I came out of the closet? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't even know you knew that expression. Yeah, okay. yeah sorry, but I'm sorry. I thought you meant out of a literal closet, because I used to sleepwalk a lot, and one time he caught me in a closet. I'm sorry, keep going. Yes, the day I came out and you picked me up and I was crying. You know. You were too cool with it, too yeah, cool. too cool. But your mother was like... A bitch, yeah, a, a raging bitch. Of course, of course, because uh, but the tradition, not the tradition, the way that my father... No, but, that but then we went to therapy. When said, I came out, we all went to therapy said, together. Uh, See, that's like an amazing instinct to have as a household. But I don't know if it would have happened if we grew up in Colombia. Like, I still don't... I think I would have just been depressed and an alcoholic if I grew up in Colombia. So I would have never come out. I don't think I would have come out. You, know, you, know, you never know. Yeah. Okay, I would have been a raging homo in Colombia. I would have been a fucking... I would have been chomping down. Now it's, be, it's better. See, okay. it's better. The, the difference see pero aquí también. I see, like, uh, last time I saw a, a lot of girls uh, holding Kissing? hands. Oh. Yeah, it's that, different, it's yeah. Different, Where see, were you? Yeah, They're no, very progressive. Where were progressive. you? I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. I went into this club called Para Ella. I don't know. <laughs> there are so many women. When I was in, in, Everybody not be, need to be inside of the closet at that time. Yeah, no, everybody was quiet. But can you tell them about how women would hit on you because they thought you were a boy? Oh, yeah, many. That was my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was, she had this, like, great <laughs> surfer haircut. Where do you think I get it from? Where do you think I get this face? You're out to your extended family. Every, I'm, ever since social media has happened, everyone gets it. Everyone gets it. I mean, it's my brand is so homo. It's like homo with a capital K in there. Do you guys feel like you've had to like explain to your family 
Like, has that She been fucking her? told them. I said, don't come uh, out to the family. She told her her family, like, day two of me coming out. She was like, Lorena's gay, and it was a huge yeah, problem. I no, it wasn't a problem when he said, Mariela, when le contaste. It was fine? Great. Everybody, no. Yeah, everyone was fine. We didn't go to therapy. Everything was great. what I told with my family. You're right, I don't know. Since you were right, since you were, since Lorena was little, we have the feeling. We have the feeling. I'm telling you, one day you came yeah, from I don't, school, uh -huh. you were seven years old and asked wow. your father for the tie. Yes, I wore all his clothing. Because I, I like don't blame him. Eliana, Eliana. Who's? Remember the, that girl? What did you that girl? I, I, you have I never wear. told me this. Yes, every time when you ask the father, <laughs> That's really I, embarrassing. Can I wear you jacket? Can I wear, I said to the father, this is, this is uh, Lorena. I think that Lorena is going to be a lesbian. So I... Then right. she broke a boyfriend, and I said, oh, bad, well, Lorena, you don't get it. I was just, com I was like, boom, roller coaster, roller coaster. <laughs> so we had the feeling, I had the feeling. Well, the only thing I remember is I would go to chess club, and I'd go to my tournaments in his ties and shirts, and I would tuck them in. They were like five sizes too big. And I would tuck everything in and have like a little jean like situation like that. <laughs> and I'd walk, <laughs> and I'd walk into my tournament. So that's what I thought you were going to say. But I did not, I do not remember being like, I need to impress a girl. I mean, her loss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she her fucked up. Yeah. He's like her loss. Yeah. <laughs> He's always been my wingman. Wingman number one. <laughs> if you had to give me one line about why stigma exists, what would you say? For therapy? For, yeah, I mean, just like, I have depression. Like, why is that not okay to say? Because, again, if people think that you said that, you are crazy, cuckoo. Como, como loco, loco que, que tiene que ir a llevarlo que tiene a meterlo que meterlo a meterlo un ese es el miedo es o sea, pero también no hay... you feel depressed and then you say oh no I cannot are you depressed no I'm not mm -hmm. I'm, <laughs> you know? I'm not depressed that smile so, yeah. no you know how do you keep up. them away <laughs> so it's kind of like if it's, I think it's afraid about that people say wow this loco so you put it on the side that was loco has to be on the side and then you cannot be part of the, 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 the uh, you know, the family, mm -hmm. kind of like, uh -huh. oh, don't talk because the loco, or oh, the loco, then you call all oh, the right. loco doesn't understand what we're talking about. Um, you guys, muchísimas gracias por participar. Eh, en verdad, estoy muy agradecido. Thank you for telling me things you've never told me before. That's why you need cameras. So that's like what parents are for with cameras. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. That was our final episode of the season. Stay tuned for season two. We are rebranding. I'm really excited about this. I think that the show will be more personal, more direct, more your way with more consistent content. So leave us a like, a comment, subscribe to our channel. And remember, you can find us on iTunes at Quiero the Show and also SoundCloud. And for any extra information on us, you can go to our website at QuietoTheShow.com. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon.